So these are the Sony WF-C700Ns and these are Sony's newest entry-level ANC earbuds. Now personally, I feel that these are Sony's most comfortable earbuds so far because these earbuds have a new sleeker sculpt to them. But today, we're going to see how the WF-C700Ns stack up to Sony's other earbuds like the WF-C500s, LinkBud S, and the WF-1000XM4s. Now when it comes to pricing, the WF-C500s have a retail price of $100. The WF C700Ns have a retail price of $120, the LinkBud S have a retail price of $200, and the WF-1000XM4s have a retail price of $280. Now, Sony's earbuds like to go on sale on a regular basis, but I do have to point out that the WF-1000XM4s are the oldest earbuds here, and I feel that their successors will be out in the summer of 2023. Nonetheless, if you want to pick any of these earbuds up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, pick up a big head approved hat. Link down below. We've got trucker hats and snapbacks. By buying a hat, you help the unbiased and unsponsored videos coming, and it also helps us cover more products and produce more versus videos. Thank you to everyone who's already bought a hat, and look out for more designs coming soon. Now first, let's talk about these cases, because the WFSC 500s and WFSC 700Ns have one style, and the LinkBud S and WF 1000XM4s have another style. Now both the WFSC 500s and WFSC 700Ns have cylindrical clamshell cases, but the WFSC 700Ns case is a little smaller. It's a little shorter, and it's a little thinner. But then there are the LinkBud S and WF 1000XM4s, which have a more traditional rectangular case. Now, the WF-C700N's case is small and it isn't super noticeable when it's in your pocket, but these other cases are just less noticeable when they're in your pocket. But you do have to keep in mind that the XM4s are the only earbuds here that actually have wireless charging. Unfortunately, Sony is just keeping wireless charging for their most premium earbuds because there are plenty of mid-tier and entry-level earbuds out there that have wireless charging. Now, when it comes to battery life, the WF-C500's have an advertised combined battery life of 20 hours. The earbuds themselves can go for 10 straight hours and the case can supply one full additional charge. But then there are the WF-C700Ns, which also have an advertised combined battery life of 20 hours, but that's with their active noise cancellation turned off. With their active noise cancellation turned on, then these have an advertised combined battery life of 15 hours. But then there are the LinkBud S, which have an advertised combined battery life of 20 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on, and with their active noise cancellation turned off, they have an advertised combined battery life of 27 hours. And finally, there are the XM4s, which have an advertised combined battery life of 24 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on, and with their active noise cancellation turned off, they can go for as long as 36 hours, which is still way above average even in 2023. So obviously, as you move up Sony's product lineup, your battery life is going Going to improve and so is your case size to battery life ratio. But nonetheless, I do feel that Sony's earbuds in general are really good options for retail workers or for drivers because Sony's earbuds have really good stamina to them on a single charge, especially if you use them with their active noise cancellation turned off. But now let's talk about fit. Now, all of these earbuds are standard fitting in your -ear earbuds, as in they all go into your ear canals a decent amount. These aren't shallow fitting in your -ear earbuds like with the Beat Studio Buds, AirPod Pro 2, or Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. So the good thing about these Sony earbuds is that they offer better lockdown than shallow fitting in your -ear earbuds. And personally, I think the WF-C700Ns have the best fit here because their new sleeker sculpt to them just rests more comfortably in the bowl of your ear. But the most important thing that I have to point out here is that with the C500, C700Ns, and LinkBud S, they all come included with silicone ear tips, as they should. But the XM4s only come included with foam ear tips. Now, these foam ear tips are meant to provide more lockdown and they're meant to passively block out more noise. But personally, these foam ear tips get super itchy very quickly. I can only wear these earbuds for 15 minutes before I just have to rip them out of my ears. So I really hope that these successors to the XM4 will have silicone ear tips included in the box like their predecessors did. But for right now, if you're looking for the earbuds here with the best fit, I do feel that the WF-C700Ns are the winners here. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, with all of these earbuds, each earbud establishes a connection with your phone. So if you just want to use one earbud at a time, you can use either one. It doesn't matter. And this is the connection setup that we expect to see on all of our earbuds nowadays. But something that's really cool that's now a 
available on the XM4's N-Link Bud S and it's coming soon through a firmware update on the WFC700Ns, which is due out in the summer of 2023, is that these earbuds can be connected to any two Bluetooth devices at the same time, which is really good if you're a power user with devices from different ecosystems. So for example, if you have an Android phone and let's say a MacBook Pro, then your Sony earbuds are going to be able to be connected to both of them and you're going to be able to hot swap between your two devices. But just so that we're perfectly clear, right now it doesn't look like the WFC500s are going to get this feature anytime soon. But when it comes to overall performance, all of these earbuds have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. But when it comes to audio codecs, both the WFC500s and WFC700Ns have support for SBC and AAC, which is a very standard stack for a pair of entry-level earbuds. But then Sony's more premium earbuds like the Link Bud S and XM4s have support for SBC, AAC, and LDAC, which is Sony's own in-house high-res audio codec. However, just keep in mind that if you do want to take advantage of LDAC, you do have to be an Android user because iPhones top out at AAC. And also, if you do decide to use LDAC, then that is going to take an additional toll on the battery life. But now let's talk about actually listening to music with these earbuds. Now, the C500s, C700Ns, Link Bud S, and WF1000XM4s are all better suited for someone who likes a bass heavy sound signature because these earbuds do like to lean towards a warmer sound signature. But definitely, both the Link Bud S and WF1000XM4s sound better than the C500s and C700Ns. The bass on the C500s and C700Ns can roll off a little bit and it can overpower the rest of your music and the highs on these earbuds can get tinny at times whereas the bass on both the link bud s and wf1000xm4s is much cleaner and when it starts to resonate it doesn't roll off and more importantly the highs on these earbuds don't get distorted now yes both the link bud s and wf1000xm4s do have better instrument separation than these other two earbuds but these earbuds still sound a little narrow because they mainly prioritize the vocals and bass instrumentals don't really have all that much room to shine here now, all of these earbuds do connect to Sony's app and you can customize their EQ. And if you're someone that likes a more neutral or vocals focused EQ, then both the Link Bud S and WF1000XM4s can get the job done if you lower the bass and raise the mids in trouble. But since the instrument separation on these earbuds isn't the best, they can still leave you wanting more. Overall, like I said, the C500s and C700N sound good enough to get the job done if you like a more bass heavy sound signature. And both the Link Bud S and WF1000XM4s f 1000 xm 4s are also better suited for someone who likes a more bass heavy sound signature. But these two more premium earbuds do perform better than the entry level earbuds here because their bass doesn't roll off and their highs don't get as distorted. Now, when it comes to controlling your medium, both the C500s and C700Ns are using physical buttons, whereas both the Link Bud S and WF1000XM4s are using touchpads. Now, in general, the touchpads on these earbuds are easy enough to use and they're very accurate, but I know some people are just going to want to go with physical buttons on their earbuds. However, I do have to point out that Sony's more premium earbuds, like the Link Bud S and WF1000XM4s, have proximity sensors, so they will automatically play in pause your music when you take them out of your ears and when you put them back in. Whereas Sony's more entry-level earbuds like the WFC700Ns and WF500s, they don't have proximity sensors, which personally I do feel is a major inconvenience. But now let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these earbuds. Now, obviously, as you move up Sony's product lineup, you're going to have better active noise cancellation. Now, right now, when it comes to ranking, the AirPod Pro 2 are currently my number one when it comes to active noise cancellation, closely followed by the Bose QC earbuds 2. Right below them are the Sennheiser Momentum 3s. Right below them are the WF1000XM4s. Below them are the Link Bud S. Below them are the Jabra Elite 85Ts. Below them are the Jabra Elite 7 Pros. Below them are the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. And below them are the Pixel Buds Pro. Now, below the Pixel Buds Pro are the Sony WFSC700Ns. Below them are the Jabra Elite 4s. Below them are the Beats Studio Buds. Below them are the Galaxy Buds 2. And below them are the Sennheiser CX Plus. So, like I said, as you move up Sony's product lineup, you're going to get a better active noise cancellation.
Now, even though the WF-1000XM4 is block out a little bit more noise than the Link Bud S, and that's partly because they come included with these foam ear tips, which help to passively block out a little bit more noise than the silicone ear tips that you'll usually find on most other ANC earbuds. Since the foam ear tips on the XM4s get super itchy for me after like 15 minutes, personally, I do prefer the Link Bud S here when it comes to active noise cancellation, because honestly, it's just a question of comfort. But like I mentioned in the past, I only use the active noise cancellation on my earbuds when I have to. And what's really important to me is the quality of their ambient mode. Now, all of these earbuds have an ambient mode, except for the entry-level WF-C500s. Nonetheless, all of these earbuds have a decent enough sounding ambient mode, and you can adjust them to your liking. But personally, I do feel that the XM4s have the best performing ambient mode here, because it sounds the most natural, and their microphone array does the best job here of blocking out wind noise when walking outdoors. But finally, here's the microphone test. Now, in general, Sony has always struggled with their microphone on their products, but they have been getting better recently. Now, in general, these microphones do sound decent enough to take phone calls with while in a quiet room, but I can still sound a little robotic and my voice isn't super focused. But I do feel that Sony's newest earbuds does have the best sounding microphone here. Now, when it comes to blocking out noise pollution, the C700Ns are trying to reduce this road noise, but there is some interference going on with my voice. Now, I do think the Link Bud S are doing a slightly better job of dealing with this road noise, and they're interfering a little less with my voice. Whereas with the C500s, these are trying to reduce this road noise, but these are really pushing my voice down. And finally, here are the XM4s, which are pushing my voice down, and there is some static in the background when I'm talking. Now, when it comes to blogging out chatter, these are doing a better job, but these are still pushing my voice down a little bit. Whereas with the C500s, my voice is a lot more prominent, but you can definitely still hear a decent amount of chatter in the background. But then there are the Link Bud S, which are blocking out a lot more chatter, but there is some interference with my voice. And finally, there are the WFC700Ns, which are letting in more chatter than the Link Bud S, but there is less interference going on with my voice. Overall, I feel that all of these earbuds have decent enough sounding microphones on them to take phone calls with while in a quiet room. But in general, Sony still has a lot of room for improvement when it comes to the microphone on their earbuds. But with all that being said, if you're trying to choose between any of these earbuds, here is my breakdown. The Sony WFC500s are a decent pair of earbuds that get the job done. But if you can, I highly recommend that you spring for the WFC700Ns, because this way, you're going to get active noise cancellation, an ambient mode, multi-pairing support, a better fit, and a slightly smaller case. Now, when it comes to choosing between the Link Bud S and WF-1000XM4s, obviously, I'm gonna say go with the Link Bud S, because personally, I can't handle the foam ear tips that come with the XM4s. But also, I recommend that you get the Link Bud S over the XM4s as of mid-2023, because the successors to the XM5s are coming soon. But the one thing that the XM4s have over the Link Bud S is the battery life. The XM5s are just a monster when it comes to battery life in general. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.